On Thursday, the CDC published a comprehensive report on the mental health of American children. It covers seven years of data and shows a troubling reality about rising anxiety and depression in our kids. Most striking, though, is that the research ends in 2019. So the report does not take into account the impact of the loss and isolation children have felt during the pandemic. NBC's Antonia Hilton places our Sunday spotlight on the kids. As the country tries once again to inch toward a sense of normalcy, doctors and parents are just starting to see the toll the pandemic has taken on children long term. Even the kids who seem all right often aren't. And she stands against the lightning and the thunder. Sydney Jackson is the senior class president and star of the spring musical at Woodlands High School in Hartsdale, New York. She's always loved to perform, but when the pandemic took her off the stage, her world shrank. And emotionally, how did that affect you? It kind of felt like there were no emotions. There's really nothing that made me like too happy. Sydney spent many days in her room, sleeping at strange hours. What do you think the pandemic took from young people? It took away the spirit of being young. It's like all of a sudden you had to grow up. Last year, Sydney started a mental health support group for students at her school. While educating others on the signs of struggle, Sydney realized she needed therapy too. It's given me a space where I can just talk about whatever I want and just share things in my life that I'm uncertain about. Uncertainty is what physicians say has turned kids from every walk of life into the walking wounded. In February and March of 2021, ER visits for suspected suicide attempts were 51% higher among girls ages 12 to 17 than during the same period in 2019. Doctors estimate the U.S. needs 47 psychiatrists per 100,000 kids. That's four times what was available in 2020. My daughter goes on Zoom. Child psychiatrist Dr. Jonathan Slater says his work is overwhelming. Sometimes I think I, I need to split myself in three. I can't handle all the calls. There's tremendous wait lists in our hospital, private clinicians, clinics for kids that need to be seen. Does our society pay enough attention to kids? Definitely not. That's been the biggest failure of the approach to pandemic. Dr. Slater treats Haley Kern, an athletic 15-year-old in Suffern, New York. Halfway through the pandemic, Haley's anxiety about COVID and relearning how to socialize in in-person school became crippling. It feels kind of like you're carrying 100 pounds on your back. You wake up and all you can think about is today's going to suck. Some days she couldn't get out of bed. Her grades lagged. Her parents took action, reaching out to Dr. Slater for more support and a higher dose of anti-anxiety medication. And Haley's still struggling. And that's really hard. It's really hard that going back to school five days a week with everybody on campus all together, it, it just wasn't the answer. Let me watch your produce. Now, Dr. Slater and other experts are urging parents to talk to their kids, to get to know them and their needs all over again. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what Sydney and Haley's parents have tried to do. Are you proud of how she's made it through? Extremely. I give her a ton of credit for having the ability to be able to recognize there's something wrong and ask for help. That's something that mm -hmm. I'm just really proud of her for.